Conditional statements are always in what kind of form? If and then. Will if always come first? Yes. Even if it's the converse. If comes first, then comes second. In converse statements, so here I would just write converse, what do we do there? Switch, like I switched my laces. Switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. I actually found my converse shoes from when I was in middle school. I found the left shoe. I found the left shoe, but not the right one. So I don't know. I have to look. What? I don't know. So I need to find it, apparently. But I found it. You should wear them to school I should. Go back there. If I found the right one. I need to find the right one. What do you mean, can I fit it? I have the same size shoes as when I was in 8th, ninth grade. 8th or 9th grade? I wish that was me. I wish that was me. Girls don't really grow an astronomical amount. Uh, I don't grow at all. Yeah, okay. All three of my sisters were in No, I don't think we're good. All right, inverse. Focus back in. Just negate. We just negate the hypothesis and the conclusion. The inverse, you negate. We'll talk about negating at the end. Contrapositive statements. It's the longest word, so we do the most work. So we switch and negate. Switch and negate. Notice how I color-coded. I did that on purpose. Switch and negate. You're welcome, Josiah. Thought of you. Just kidding. What does the negation symbol look like? It's a squiggle. That's it. A squiggle. What does it mean? Make it the opposite. Okay, make it the opposite. So when we do that, what do we do to the sentence? Put a knot. What if there's already a knot there? Take it out. Okay, good. My class I played Kahoot with yesterday, there was a trick question that said... The, gre the grass is not green, so then they did, the grass is not not green. Yeah. That is dumb. <laughs> it was an option, and eight of them chose it out of, oh like, 15 God. people. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm 100% serious. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, so if there's already a knot, you take it away. If there is not a knot, <laughs> they are not knots. Right. right. <laughs> All right, next. Ready? It's 2.2 now. 2.2, we go over inductive and deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning, what is it based off of? Observations, observations what, AK patterns. What also? Behavior. Patterns, behavior, observations. Is inductive reasoning foolproof? No. no. Things change. It's been two days in a row that Josiah has dressed crazy for homecoming week. So what can we guess about tomorrow? He's going to dress crazy. But what if he says, you know what, I don't have, what's tomorrow? What if he, he says, you know what, I don't have any cool pajamas, so I don't want to do it. Okay? It's not always foolproof. You have something planned? Huh? You have something planned? Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Make and test the conjecture. When you see those words, make and test the conjecture. How many tests do I want? Three. Three, at least three. And then, what will your f exact answer look like? A sentence. A, sentence, a complete sentence. Three quarters of it will come from the problem itself. If it said make, a con make and test a conjecture about the addition of positive numbers, then he would say the addition of positive numbers is positive. All right? Deductive reasoning, there are three things it's based off of. It's facts. Facts, first one. <sighs> Start with the letter D. Yes, laws, but I don't have it on the screen. Definitions. Definitions. A, it's two words. A, C. A, C, C, E. <laughs> accepted truths, accepted properties. We accept them to be true. Oh. You're good. Law of detachment. What does it look like? How many conditional statements are there? One. It looks like one conditional statement. So when I say write one conditional statement, that means it looks 
like. That's not what your answer will look like. Your answer will look like a straight up statement. But the law of detachment looks like one conditional statement. And then Rose was saying the other part. In order to use the law of detachment, the hypothesis has to be fulfilled. So the hypothesis must be fulfilled. All right, the law of syllogism. How many conditional statements or statements are there? Two. Two conditional statements. That's what it looks like. You'll see two after the another words. Two after another, one after another. All right, and then what else will you see in these two conditional statements? You'll have a common phrase, and yes, it will be a hypothesis in one sentence and a conclusion in another. Wait. I'm not. I didn't do anything. All I said was the answer. The common phrase must be a hypothesis and a conclusion. In 2.4, we're going to do two examples. So we're almost finished. So 2.4. Must be a hypothesis and a conclusion. Uh, what happens? You, okay? you can copy someone else's, buddy. It'll be okay. <laughs> I promise. Yeah, just skip a couple lines. Oh. You can copy his after we're done, okay? When did we get a 2.3? We didn't. Oh, okay. So skip a couple lines. Come on, just skip a couple and write these down. It'll be okay. All right, so we're going to do this problem and justify, and then we're going to solve the second problem. Okay, what should we do first? Distribute. 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 So we're going to talk about it. What's negative 2 times 4x? Negative 8x. What's negative 2 times negative 14? Positive 28. Oh. Math. Math scholars. Apparently. Distribute the 5. What's 5 times negative x? Negative 5x, 5 times negative 4. Okay, so what property did we just do? Distributed. Is it not? No, it's not. So here's why it's still not of equality, even though we technically distributed on both sides. When we use the of equality, like we're about to, what would we move next? What's the smallest x? What's smaller than Negative 8 is a smaller x. How would we move it to the other side? Uh, You'd add x. But look, this is why it's of equality. When we add x to both sides, we're, we're adding the same exact thing. Whereas when we distribute, we're doing something completely different. Do you see my colors? I did blue over here, red over here. Two completely different actions. Okay. So this is the addition property of what? Equality. Of equality. All right, so then on the left side, we still have 28. What's minus 5x plus 8x? 3x. 3x, and then minus 20. What do we need to move now? The negative 20. What's the opposite of negative 20? Positive 20. Which would be what property? Uh, addition. The addition yeah. property cool. of equality. Almost there. What's 28 plus 20? 48 equals 3x. What do we have to do here? Division. Division. By what number? 3. three. So yes, it is the division property of equality. What does x equal? 16, which would be the substitution. substitution. Property of equality. Substitute. Ta da! All right. We okay with that problem? Why did we do what we do? Any questions like that? Where did we get this from? I made it smaller so we can do the bottom. Wait, how do we make sure it's division property? I mean, did, uh, distributed property on and not of equality. It will never be of equality. 
Because you'll only be distributing on one side of the equal sign, no matter what. So it'll always be straight up distributed property. Good question. Uh, the second part, y equals 3t minus 6. What are we solving for? Y. T. Oh. t. It's already solved for y. We want to solve for t. What is t immediately attached to? 3. three. So we need to get 3t by itself. I'll give you a second to write it down. What is on the same side as 3t? Negative 6. How do we move that negative 6? Can I add a letter and a number like that? No. no. So what do I do? Yeah, you write them next to each other. Equals 3t. Now do I have 3t by itself? Yes. Now I need to get t by itself. By dividing, because what is 3 doing to the letter t? Multiplying. The opposite of multiplication is division. So when you divide, you need to divide each piece by the number 3. Can anybody guess why? So you can simplify. Does 3 go into y? No. no, so you'd write y over 3. Does 3 go into 6? Yes. How many times? Two. Two times. If you just wrote it once <laughs> on that left side, then you wouldn't have been able to simplify. Okay, this is the final answer. Mm -hmm. The last thing we're going to talk about are perpendicular lines. You want to write it down so that other people can catch up. Perpendicular lines. We talked about it yesterday. We also talked about it in 2.1. Would you like to say it louder? For the intersect and form a right angle. They're lines that intersect and form a right angle. Fight me. Can I? Ooh. Perpendicular lines intersect and form a right angle. What does the shape look like? The symbol. No. Right angle. Upside down T. Upside down T. I would draw it. Yeah, upside down T. All right. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to correct our quizzes.